sounds terrible. That sound right there is the most frustrating thing that a machinist can encounter in a given day. It's something that any machinist who has been in the game long enough has experienced and it'll waste your time, it'll waste your material, and ultimately, it'll waste your money. It's a complicated problem, but today we're gonna dive into it and help you solve that most infamous of foes, chatter. Did somebody say chatter? Dude, that is nice. I'm keeping this. Today, we're gonna help you with the tips and tricks to help you solve it. This is a very large book with a lot of information in it, and that is because chatter is a very big problem with a lot of solutions for it. We're gonna cover but the tiniest sliver on how to help you. So just remember, we're only covering a small piece of that pie of that enormous problem known as chatter. But first, what is chatter? It's that whining, screaming noise that comes out when your machining parameters aren't quite where they want to be. Now what chatter is, is a vibratory occurrence or vibration that is happening between your workpiece and your cutting tool. When those two surfaces are rubbing against each other, that tool can actually be bouncing against that material. And what it does during that vibratory process, it begins to sing. And that's why you hear that whine or that chirping sound and gives you that infamous wavy pattern on your part. That's chatter. So we've done a lot of talking about chatter now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make some chatter and hopefully we're gonna fix it so we have three boring bars we're gonna work with we have steel heavy metal and the well-known and well-established solid carbide now in addition to these boring bars we're gonna use three different types of inserts and they all have a different nose radius we have a 0.031 nose radius 15.6 nose radius and we have a 7.8 or 8 thou nose radius notice these are all the same insert right this is Kenna Metal's new KCU-10B insert it's a universal insert we're gonna be cutting steel today but the chip breaker is the same for each one the only difference is going to be the nose radius so in order to show you guys and gals techniques to reduce chatter we want to use something that's gonna replicate what you might see in the real world and for each one of those tests this is gonna be our part right here it's long it's slender it's got thin walls we're gonna be doing some ID turning on it with three different bars and three different inserts, so that's nine different tests in which we get chances to reduce or hopefully eliminate that chatter and hit a 32 service finish. Let's do it. Now, in addition to those two tooling parameters, the boring bar and the inserts, I am gonna play with the parameters a little bit. I will adjust the speed as necessary. The feed, however, we're gonna keep locked in. If you remember, one of the problems with chatter is it messes up or gives you a poor surface finish. In order to get that 32 surface finish, there's a specific feed rate that we have to feed at with each nose rate so that will be locked into place. The last parameter, depth of cut, we're gonna see, I'm gonna start with a 30 thou depth of cut, but I may, again, if needed, play with that just a little bit. Now, in addition to cutting parameters and cutting tools, there are a couple other kind of almost tweaks and hacks that people have used in the past, but in this video, we are going to focus primarily on reducing chatter that comes from the tooling component. And with that, let's make some chips. Now we're gonna go ahead and this boring bar, we're gonna put all the boring bars at the same length. This will allow us to eliminate any variation from boring bar stick out. And the first insert we're gonna stick in here is our 0 .031. This is the worst possible setup we can do. And we're gonna work our way towards hopefully the best. As you can, as you can hear, that sounds terrible. <laughs> We're gonna adjust the speed a little bit here. So what we heard was a whole bunch of chatter. And as I got near the back of the part, it almost went away with the reduced speed. You'll see this a lot with parts that stick out kind of far, mainly because we're more rigid near the jaws. But again, that's not an optimal strategy, especially if you have something like this robot here. These are our new halter robots that we just had installed before Christmas. If you have something like that, you're gonna want a parameter that runs that part consistently chatter-free from the front all the way to the back. So in order to check these parts in the machine, we're gonna be using our SJ210 from Mitsutoyo. I went ahead and I rotated the turret around so I could get myself a nice little shelf to put the indicator on, and we'll see what we get. This part sounded terrible, so I imagine our reading will be also terrible. So we came in at a, a whopping 227. That's got more tread than a super swamper tire. So I would definitely, again, recommend that you never use this combination to cut anything that you wanna look good at all. So we're gonna go ahead, we're actually gonna use a little macro that Donnie wrote. 
Thank you, my friend. And we're gonna cut the part open so you can see inside what it kind of looks like. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change our tooling a little bit, see if we get better results. So here you can really see kind of the result. The top, that chatter is terrible. We adjusted the speed here in the center. And if you look down at the bottom, it actually got pretty good down there towards the rear. But again, because that's where we have this part chucked up and so we get a lot more rigid. But we're looking for a combination of tooling and parameters that can really give us a good cut all the way down. That's what we're looking for is consistency. Our nose radius on our insert has dropped from a 31 to a 15.6. Let's run it, we'll play at the feed, see where she's at. Door shut, CNC auto door. We are gonna start out at 50% of our speed. When a lot of times you have a boring bar like this hanging out, you're just never gonna be able to reach those speeds that they recommend for you. So we're not gonna start at 750. Like I say, we're gonna cut it in half and see how she does. Maybe we'll have better luck with the heavy metal, the carbide bars, but right now we're definitely gonna start at a lower speed. You can hear she's still chirping. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reduce our depth of cut a little bit from 30 to 20, see if there's any improvement there. You can still hear her screaming in there a little bit. Still not ideal, probably not giving us our surface finish we want. Okay, we definitely saw some improvement with the 15.6. We're all the way down to a 102. Still not really anywhere where we want to be, but you can see that when we reduce that nose radius, it does drastically reduce the chatter, which in turn gives us a much better surface finish, even if we're not where we want. We'll cut through this. Ignore the top part there, that was an experiment that failed. But below that we have at least a consistent surface finish that kind of goes all the way down. But remember we're chasing a 32. We ran this at 300 SFM. We fed at the fourth out to get us a 32. So that gives you an example of how chatter can really be detrimental to the requirements of your part. Um, all right, next one, let's do it. So now we're using our eighth out radius and we came in about 50 SRA. So we're definitely approaching where we wanna be. We're not there yet, but it seems that we are on the right road, at least with that eighth out nose radius. It is getting a little bit better. It is not my 32, but if you had a 64 surface finish requirement, this would probably get you by. That wraps up our test cuts with the steel bar. We're now moving to a heavy metal bar. This is kind of an in-between bar. I don't know the exact mix of the bar, but it's somewhere between a carbide and steel with respect to rigidity and cost. So if you don't want to go full-fledged carbide, but you want something more than steel, heavy metal may be your choice. Let's see how she performs. So we put the 31,000 nose radius back in with our heavy metal bar. We're coming in around a 70 RA, which isn't our 32, but in all honesty, not that terrible. So here's our first look at our first part with the heavy metal bar. And again, a 70 isn't quite the 32 we're looking for, but if you remember that steel bar gave us around a 225 RA. So just by changing our bar, we've seen a massive improvement. So we are on test number five. We got our heavy metal bar still, but we're switching to a smaller nose radius. Coming in at 15.6, let's see how she runs. So again, we are improving when we change that nose radius. We got that 15.6 in there. We've dropped down to just above a 50. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, that's where we we're at with the eight thou and the steel bar. So that heavy metal bar has definitely conferred some benefits with a larger nose radius.
So now we're moving on to test six. We're still not really where we want to be, but we'll see if we can get there with our heavy metal bar and our eighth balancer. It did give me some chatter in the front, which came in around like 117. I was able to catch a small portion when it just started and it's still coming in around a 52. We are starting to make some progress here. I got a little greedy at the top there with my speed. I had to cut it down to 300 SFM and it improved. I think I could have got that finish all the way through if I would have started with that lower speed. And we did that again with double the speed that we had to use on our steel bar with that same nose radius. So that wraps up our test with our standard steel and our heavy metal bars. Now we're gonna switch over to carbide, tried and true. We'll see if we can't get rid of that chatter for good. still chattering, but it's not screaming like the other bars were. So that just goes to show you what a difference your bar choice can make. sounding better but we're still at a 70 let's go ahead and cut her open and see what she looks like so here is our carbide bar with our 31 thousandths nose radius we didn't really improve from the heavy metal bar with that same size i think we're probably reaching the limits of what we can do with that size nose radius we'll go ahead and put a 15 6 in there and see if we improve that way So next up, we got our carbide bar and we're gonna use our 0 0.0156 nose radius. Now I'm interested to see how this comes out because this, in all honesty, is probably where I would have started if I was setting up a job. This would kind of be my, my go-to, that carbide and that 15.6. So uh, let's see what happens. So sometimes the smallest change can have a really significant impact. We got a 26. Now that was just by going from that 31 to that 15.6 nose radius. I also ran this one a little bit slower. According to our surface finish calculator, we were supposed to run at four, but because I really wanted to hit that surface finish, I did drop it down to a feed rate of 0 0.0024 inches per revolution, but I'm definitely happy I did. See by the results here. All right, so there's our carbide bar and our 15.6. Again, this is where I would have started. And again, I did drop the feed rate a little bit, but that's a 25 surface finish and she looks beautiful. We got one more nose radius to try. We'll see if we can clean up the whole thing. So we are almost done with our test. In fact, this is the ninth and final one right here. And just in time, we got a new SJ210. They replaced this lovely plum color here. So I'm gonna go grab it for you and give you guys a first peek. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see how it performs. So we ended up with a 22 RA surface finish. That is a little better than we got with our 15.6 nose radius. I'd have to look at the parameters to see the speed and feed and see what ultimately would probably be the most efficient tool path for us. But uh, so far, really can't complain with the 22. Here's our last look at our last part. We had a carbide bar, 8,000 nose radius, and a 22 surface finish. Nothing really to complain about. Now, the coolest part about that test, or about this test really, is we gotta take you on a journey from like a 225, 27-ish, all the way down to a 22. And why were we able to do that? Well, because each time that we changed our boring bar, it got a little bit more dense that made it less likely to deflect and it absorbed some of that vibration, thereby giving us less chatter. And with our nose radius, each time we went to a smaller one, we reduced the cutting forces and that also made the part much less likely to chatter. So that just goes to show you that even a few small changes like bar material or nose radius can have a significant impact on the quality of the parts you produce. 
that wraps up our demonstration of chatter reduction technique for you today. Now, if you remember that big book that we showed you that was representing all the various ways to fix chatter, we know there are more ways that you can reduce the chatter you find in your parts than what we've shown here, but we wanted to give you a small example of ways that you could reduce that using your tooling, using your nose radius, and maybe a little bit of parameter adjustment. So, we'll see you next time.